Hi guys, right, we've got another installment of trialing the probe and this time I'm going to run a test uh, scenario on it. I've got um, a piece of waste uh, waste board here. I just want to use that because I know I'm going to cut through this piece here. I've glued on my stock which I want to work on and clamped it all down so it's nice and secure. I've got my machine homed and I've just moved it generally over the workpiece because I'm going to probe and I don't know um, I don't know exactly the exact process, but I figured I'd just put it there. Now I have read the instructions, sort of, um, and we're going to have a look at it. So we've got the Shapiko on, we've got our stock in place, I've got um, a nice little handy controller, which I can use to control it. I've just got it in the millimeter mode so I can just move it around as and when. You won't see that, I'm going to do it behind the camera. Now we've got our probe here, it's a nice, nice green light, and then we've got the um, uh, alligator clip there as well. You touch that again. You can just see it's changing color. Now the instructions say if we want to find this datum here, we need to put it so the lip here is over the edge. So we're going to do that. What we just do is slide them on, and there we can see he's on. Now this piece of work isn't exactly level. Um, it's more or less there, but it's a bit of wavy wood and a little bit of scrap I had uh, for a project I had in mind, which I think you'll all appreciate. And I'll show you later. So we've got the probe in place, I'm going to get the alligator clip, clamp them on the mill end. Now it's worth mentioning that if you were using a standard wood mill end or a two fluted one, it could possibly give different, um, uh, different output because if you look at the end, first off, you've got a different distance from on the, um, on the flutes, but also just to be wary that this is coated so if you were trying to probe against the red painted edge, it probably wouldn't work because it's not conductive. At least I don't think it is. Maybe it is. So for this purpose and this uh, demonstration, I'm just using a metal one. Now carbide 3D, so you need to position the uh, mill end over the little dot or circle. So we're just doing that. And I'll just bring it down a couple of mil all via my nice uh, six quid remote control. Now I'm gonna pan across to carbide motion. I don't know if you can see that too well, but it's reading out the position's not correct and it's got a different Z height. Now what we want to do is have a look at that. I don't know if I can zoom in on this or not. Give it a go. Yeah, there we go, we can do. Tell I'm new to the videos. Now what we're going to do is go to probe and here we can see our settings. So we've got our probe corner, we want to probe our Z, X and Y and then we also want to use a tool 201 which is the quarter end uh, piece. The other options are to probe uh, the X, the Y or the Z independently um, but for most of my work I would always probe all three. And then the other bits we've got there, we've got a quarter inch end bit, um, flat and, uh, and bore. We've also got one sixteenth and one eighth flat and bore for both of those. So you've got six options there. So now I'm just going to, I'll click done in a second, sorry, begin probing. But what I'll do, I'll just focus the camera on the workpiece again so we can see that. Lots of sockets. So now we can see the probes nicely against the edge there and I'll just hold it just so it doesn't move and I'm going to click begin probing. As you can see it's just rocking because I've got an uneven workpiece. So we just click begin probing. So it's doing Z first, the way it's activated it's now moving along the left or Z edge and pulled off. See it's activating each corner. Slight bit of movement there. Right, so now it's done its probing. What we're going to do is just remove the plate, put that to one side, and remove the alligator clip. Now, if we zoom back in on carbide motion, 
Now I'm gonna all the way back. You can see that we've probed X and Y is now at zero and Z is at 28. So it's gone 28 mil above the workpiece. Now if I zoom back to the workpiece and then I'll move the cutter down just so we can see where it's ended up. So I'm just moving it in the millimeter mode using my joy pad. So it's now set that as zero. Now, there is one interesting thing that I've noticed or can notice straight away on this. It doesn't quite, there's no display the camera angle, but it looks like X and Y it looks like the cutter blade is parallel to the edges. So if I look straight down there, this is in line with the edge and same with the X axis. Try and get a close up on the camera. So I don't know if you can quite see that, but it looks perfectly in line with that edge. Now this is slightly different behavior to what I had expected as I would have expected it to go right on the uh, so the very tip of this here. Now based on that, I would say it's got a slight offset in it. Um, I'm not necessarily sure of the reason for why at, at the moment. I'm sure it's something we can ask the guys at Carbide 3D. But based on that being a 1 8 and um, a mil bit, I imagine it's got a 3.2 mil offset each side. And if you moved it across by 3.2, whatever it is, or one sixteenth of a, uh, one eighth of an inch, you'd have it dead on the centre of that work face. Um, can't really easily move the camera, but I can certainly say that looks pretty dead on on the Z axis as well. Now I'm going to have a go milling something and see how that turns out. But um, I think that covers off a, a quick look at the probe, its general functionality. Um, any questions? Please ask. Cheers for watching, guys.